I've come to draw, I've come to draw, to draw, to draw, draw from you again, yeah, I've come to draw, I've come to draw, to draw, to draw, to draw from you again, yeah, yeah. I need refill, I need refill, 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 refill from you, my Lord, yeah, yeah. I need refill, I need refill, 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 refill from you, my Lord, I got, okay, 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 let's get it on with, it's a chapter a day, it's that time to boost your faith, to give you the word, to keep you going, so you can be able to stand the trying times, the difficult seasons, the challenging moments, and you are going to come out victorious, victorious. I am unstoppable, invisible, victorious. I can do all things. I am unstoppable, invincible. Victorious, I can do all things. Well, it's not a sing stream. It's not a sing live, you know. Today, we don't have anybody in our birthday book. But that doesn't mean nobody won today. So, we are just going to pray for those who are born today, regardless. Whether we have people to connect to them or not. Welcome, Mom, Ka, Mama, Tanga. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate you. So, let's pray for the birthday, people. Lord, we bring your children before you. We pray you bless them. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives, O oh God. As they have this additional year, Lord, they're not going to take your grace for granted. But your grace is going to be sufficient for them enough to be able to fulfill purpose and carry out through life, causing many more people to want to know you better. I want to love you more. Thank you, Lord. Bless them and bless their generation upon generation. Enlarge their coast to be able to not only be blessed, but be a blessing in their generations and beyond. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you always hear and answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're going right away. We definitely have to read a chapter before we get to talk and chat and talk about our lessons learned and so we are going on today is Luke chapter 4 and it has 44 chapters 444 Luke 4 1 to 44 4 4 4 we have lots of fours okay so let's get it on with I'm Princess Lisa and Queen of Hearts and Laughter how could I forget that? Okay, so we laughed already. So let's get it done with. Luke chapter 4. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will. I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time 
thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day the scripture this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes, and all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself, whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also ye in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout the, all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Eliseus the prophet, and none of them was cleansed save Naaman the Syrian, and all they in the synagogue. And when they heard these things, they were filled with wrath, and rose up, and thrust him out of the city, and led him on to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And there were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the mist, he came out of him, and hurt him not. And they were all amazed, and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirit, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and he left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they had, any sick with diverse diseases, brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them, and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out, and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him and came unto him, and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for there am I sent. And he preached in the synagogue of Galilee. Oh yeah. That is it for today. Luke chapter 4. 
and this is an interesting chapter so we are going right on with our lessons learned we'll talk about them and then you can say something that you also learn you can write it in the comment section you can request to come on live and we'll get you on video so you can also talk like i said someone in my audience can get blessed by whatever you have to say or whatever the spirit of god is ministering to you that i just might not get that ministration that's why we can be like thousands of us in a in an auditorium and a pastor preaches a message just one single message and it's ministered to us differently because God ministers to us through his servants and through the word in a way that he addresses whatever we're going through. So whatever could minister to you could be what the person on this live stream, the person that this live stream was created for needs. Not exactly what I'm saying or what I read in Luke chapter 4, but what you have to say in the comment section. So please don't be held back. You have to go ahead and speak if you have to. Don't hold it back. God can speak through any and everybody. Don't bother about who is going to say what or who is going to think what. We don't really bother about that year on a card, a chapter a day. Here, everybody is important and everybody has a say. You can also ask questions. We endorse that. I thought about it yesterday and I was like, yeah, some people might have questions about some things. And why not get the questions together and then give it to someone who can actually answer them perfectly if I don't have answers to them. And give it to someone who can answer it perfectly. Or go brood on it and pray on it and meditate and wait on God so God gives us a perfect answer. You know, we don't know like everything because we are the ones reading the word. Because I'm the one doing this live stream, because I'm the one reading the word, doesn't necessarily mean that I know everything. Okay? So let's go. And Jesus, after being declared that he's the son of God, that was the public declaration. He's the son of God. What was the next thing? The, the spirit of God carried him to the wilderness to be tempted. I, I cannot just overemphasize on this point that God spoke. That God sent you, that God gave you an assignment doesn't mean that it's not going to be challenging. Doesn't mean that there are not going to be difficult moments. This was Jesus being carried by God himself into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. After a proclamation of the fact that Jesus is his only begotten son. Come on now people, think about it. Let's just think about it a little bit. That your father, let's just say your biological father is going to say, this is my daughter, I'm very proud of her. And then I know that she's this kind of person, this and this and this person, because she has the capability, she has all the abilities and everything. And then he sends you into the lion's den, like that. There might be a possibility of us in this generation thinking, this man surely adopted me. Am I his true child? You know, like that. I remember sometime my mom trashed me so much so that I, I told her that she wasn't my mother. <laughs> The more I said that, the more she trashed me very well. Like, <laughs> oh my God, you know, like that. So some of us would think like, no, I, I don't think this man loves me. I think I was adopted. I think I'm an adopted child, you know. How can you just declare right now that I'm your son in whom you're well pleased? I'm your daughter in whom you're well pleased. And the next thing is you're carrying me into the wilderness to let the devil for that matter, tempt me. Like, is that even okay? Is it even normal? But the ways of God are past finding. That's actually the truth about it. <clears throat> and so that's why we still go on with the fact that when Jesus speaks the word, it doesn't mean that it's going to be challenge free. It doesn't mean that it's going to be storm free. It doesn't mean that it's going to be just smooth. Yeah, sometimes it is, but not all the time. So when challenges come, it's not about the time for us to be doubting God, but it's the time for us to ask God that show me the way. It says he makes a way in the desert. He makes a way in the wilderness, even where there seems to be no way. So that's God for you. And so he took Jesus to be tempted. And one more thing I'd have to say, the devil is not going to come and tempt you in a place where you are powerful, where is your strength, where your strength is. He's not going to come and tempt you there. Because you already have that place covered. You're kind of conscious, you know. He's going to tempt you in the place of your need. That's what really makes sense. And that's where faith truly comes in. 
you know that regardless of what I'm going through right now, it's not a forever situation. So I can manage right now and stand with the word of God and stand alone if I have to, because it's the truth that will set us free and stand alone if I have to, you know. So Jesus was here and the devil is tempting him. They said here that he was hungry. He was hungry. And if he was hungry, the enemy will not go and be tempting him for some other thing. The enemy will be tempting him in the area of his need. He was hungry. So he comes, turn these stones to bread. Sometimes, just sometimes, we use the power that God has given us for selfish gains. And God doesn't like that. Jesus had the power to do all these things that the devil was tempting him or pushing him to do. But he didn't fall for it. I just love how Jesus used to live it. And Jesus knows that we have the ability to live that same life. To live the way he lived here on earth. I know there is a possibility of us saying that he was God. So there were some things that were that came natural to him but i don't think so because there was a place where he felt the pain and he was asking god that if this will not pass let god take it away but if not let god's will be done he felt the pain he was human as much as he was god he was human and that's why he has made us he said ye are gods right and he has given us the spirit of god to dwell on the inside of us which basically if we yield to the leading of the spirit we're going to be able to live like jesus really did live on earth so it's not so different oh sekika carol is here thank you thank you thank you he says welcome my attention to this passage is just the fact that the demons could identify jesus but we're struggling today on the personality of jesus we just don't know him i pray for grace that we may know him more i'm telling you like even even amongst ourselves we don't even know who is truly a christian but in those days the people used to say about the disciples these ones have been with christ like the difference was clear but in our generation the word of god is so diluted it doesn't come with so much power there's a there's a part here that he said that when jesus was preaching the word when he was reading in the synagogue everybody noticed that the word was coming with so much power and authority but because the word is diluted because most of the things we're doing right now is kind of self-centered that's why we don't see the power. That's why we don't see the manifestations of God. Because if you're showing self, if I'm talking about me here, not about Jesus, not about God, not directing the people to God, why should he use his power to flow through me when it's me that is talking? You see, that's what is happening. Jesus was so connected to God. He was so he was so in the place of prayer we heard several times even as much as he was doing all that he was doing there were times that we heard that he had to move away to go pray to go wait on god and all that we don't do that in our days we just want everything now 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 we beep god in prayers we flash him in prayers puff and we expect things to happen through us no it's not going to work like that it doesn't work like that if God himself, Jesus was here and he was saying that there are some things that are not going to go out except by prayer and fasting. They wouldn't. We would have to pray and fast. But our generation, hmm, fasting is far-fetched. Let's even not even go there. Even just the prayer, prayer that we need to pray. It's hard for us to pray before talking of fasting. Hmm. It is well with us. But we need all these things. And if we don't do it, we're not going to see the power. We're not going to see the might that is necessary. The enemy still was tempting Jesus and tempting Jesus only through the things that he knew Jesus was like, basically speaking, lacking here on earth because he was God and he had all these things. He, he still came as Jesus in human form. And so there was a tendency of, oh, I'll give you everything I have. Of the truth, it was his. Man had fallen and man had handed over everything that God gave to him to the devil. And up until Jesus died, it was the devil's. So it was true. Like he's going to give it to whoever he desires to give it to. And Jesus had left the kingdom of heaven and come on earth. So of course, he's like, um, should I say he's, um, his personality or how am I going to call it? His opportunities or things he had. They were not there anymore because he was on earth. And so that could be very tempting. Like, 
for him to prove a point. You know, all this is mine. Even though someone gave it to you, I'm going to take it back. You know that kind of pride? Like that subtle pride. We say, no, we're confident. We're proud. And pride goes before a fall. So the enemy is tempting Jesus only in the places where Jesus has need. He wasn't going to be tempting Jesus in whether he knew the word of God right or not. And the good thing is, we'll come back to the place why we're doing Akkad in the first place. Because we need to study the word of God. We need to be so soaked in the word of God. We need to be sold out for God. We need to have this amazing connection with God that cannot be moved. Welcome, Mam Dasi Mary. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. My stunning, stunning sister. <laughs> so we need that. We really, really need the word of God. Because every time, even the devil here was talking about the word of God. It's the word of God that the devil was using. It was the word of God that the devil was using. So if the devil can also use the word of God, one more of us. They say they know the power, the enemies and his agents know the power of God and they tremble. Who are we? Like, seriously, sometimes we take God for granted. We take his grace for granted. We frustrate his grace a lot. It's really sad. You know, and so he says it is written and he was doing the it is written, it is written, it is written all over the place. Hold on a moment. What was that? You know, it's like I actually didn't read a part. I didn't read a part. I brought him to Jesus and set him on a pinnacle and I skipped to some other part. Oh my God. Is this for real? I hope. <laughs> Did I read all of this? I, I don't remember and when the devil had ended all the temptation, it departed for him from a season. Okay, so I'll probably have to read this part and then I'll have to edit it and add it on there. So you all will have to forgive me. And uh, I'd have to read this first part right up to where. And he taught in the synagogue so that he was glorified. Because I'd have to read 1 to 15 again. You all just pardon me. I, I have a feeling that I didn't read all of this and uh, it's not going to be good. So I'm going to read 1 to 16. Yeah, I'm going to read 1 to 16 again just to be sure and just to be safe. Okay. Can I? Am I allowed? <laughs> yeah. Luke chapter 4 and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended he afterward hungered and the devil said unto him if thou be the son of God command this stone that it be made bread and Jesus answered him saying it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him and he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all, his, all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. 
And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogue, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Okay, so I'm sure now that I've read everything. So, um, Jesus was tempted in every way. I love the fact he kept saying, and it is written, and it is written, and it is written. So it's very, very important for us to have the word of God. We need to be soaked with the word of God. But the word of God is so diluted, so much so that even when we're saying it is written, it doesn't come with as much power as it did in Jesus' day. Welcome, Mam Tamu Fofani. I'm still waiting. I need an edit of the contact that I got in my inbox. I didn't get it right. So I was asking if there is some number I need to add to it. Okay. So um, please get that right for me. Please, 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 please. Okay. And it says... So Jesus kept saying all the time, it is written, it is written. And we need to know the word for a season. So um, the Bible says, and now let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich, right? So you can't be getting into a situation where maybe it's a situation of poverty and then you're saying I am healed, you know? So you need to know the word. Like the, the word of God still says somewhere that knowing the word of God and rightly dividing the word of truth. So you have to use the right word for the right thing. You can't be desiring healing. And then you said, um, whatever I lay my hands on shall prosper. That has to do with like breakthrough financial and all that it says by his tribes, I am healed. That's the right scripture for healing. You know, healing is his children's bread. So I'm eating of it. I'm feeding of it. So those are the kinds of scriptures you should be using for healing he says um you want to do financial or blessings or prosperity he says he teaches my hands to make wealth those are the scriptures you should be confessing so you need to know which scripture works for what that's how much you should know the word and get to love it that much so jesus knew exactly what to say when when he had to do with tempting with temptation he says no you won't tempt god when he had to do with serving he knew that you can serve only the lord your god and him only that you serve you know those kinds of things i i heard of a story where a girl was told by her pastor to give a tithe of her virginity and i'm like how do you calculate a tithe of your virginity again like you shall serve the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. He never ever said any word in scripture and nobody should bring that kind of stupid and, and it, how, how am I supposed to call it? The word is not coming. Nonsensical revelation. One tenth of your virginity. Like seriously? Ha. Huh. The rate at which we don't study the word of God, the rate at which we're so papa inclined, let my papa hear the word, let my mama hear the word, let my this hear the word. You are not a second class citizen for God's sakes. You are a child of the most high. Why did God tear the veil of the holy of holy giving us direct access? Because he knew that we could get direct access. So why are you always wanting to go through somebody? And sometimes the persons are just deceiving you. And you can't even see it because you're so, so lost in whatever they're doing. Rather than in the word of God. The word of God is true. The word of God stands sure. If you have read in the Bible that all fornicators will end up in the hell of fire. You're not going to be thinking or even contemplating about that kind of nonsensical revelation of giving one tenth of your virginity to who to who who are you giving it to who are you giving the one tenth of the virginity to to god and the, the girl was really really ready to go ahead and give one tenth of her virginity to the man of god because the man has ministered to her a lot. So to her, she thinks she's serving God by giving one-tenth of her virginity to the man of God. Sleeping with the man of God is acting, is, is rendering service unto the man of God. Sleeping with the woman of God is rendering service unto the woman of God. As in, in which Bible? Which revelation is that? 
God help us. And then he says here, he gives him all those things. And then the interesting thing that I see here, even for Jesus, they said that the enemy tempted him and tempted him and tempted him and decided to go for a season, which means he's going to come back. And that's why you need to be filled with the word. So when he's coming back, he has no place. He sees that you're still filled up. But when he comes back and he sees that there's still space, you know how he comes back? He comes back more powerful. Why? Because he says he comes back with seven others. And that's why it's kind of really, really hard to win over a backslider as opposed to actually preaching the gospel to someone that is just hearing the gospel for a first time. Why? This is the perfect reason. The enemy came back and he found a room and he didn't just come back by himself. He brought seven other demons to accompany him this time around. You know, he went and fortified himself. So while the enemy is fortifying himself, we need to be fortifying ourselves in Christ much more because that's really crazy. And so he, he actually um, went for fortification left Jesus for a season and then Jesus went about doing his stuff the good thing about the Word of God is that when you're focused on the on the Word of God when you're standing by the Word of God when you're holding on to the Word of God God is going to do a lot of things and the fame of God through you is going to spread abroad we have emphasized this over and over when you're fulfilling your purpose when you're working where God wants you to work your fame is going to spread abroad. You're not going to fight for people to follow you. You're not going to fight for people to like you. You're not going to fight for people to watch your content. You're just going to put it out there because you know that people need it. Jesus just came and he went about and was preaching his gospel and doing what he had to do. Setting the captive free, setting the people at liberty and preaching the word of God. That's what he was called to do. That's what he was born to do. And he just went about doing it. And as he was doing it, the people were following him because... It gets as it be, as people will say, there is something about truth that it cannot hide. The truth cannot hide. Like it has a way of attracting people to itself, especially people who need the solution. And if I need a solution to a problem and I see that you have the solution to the problem, will I not know that this is the solution to the problem? I would know if I'm the one who is in problems. For example, if I see someone who is a dentist or whatever, you know, I would know, right? And I would know that that's the right person to go with my dental problems, with my dental issues, right? I would know that. So, of course, I would not see a dentist and then I see maybe a pediatrician and then I'm going to a pediatrician instead of a dentist when I know that I have the dental problems. I'm not a child, so I don't need to go to a pediatrician. You know, it's, it's like that. We know those things. And so that's what happens when you're fulfilling purpose, which is a basically being a solution to the problem you were created for people who need that solution are just going to follow you naturally people are just going to naturally follow you because they need that solution but when you're fighting with people when you're doing things for show off when you're competing with people and all that you can't see the power the power is not going to manifest that's why we do a lot of things that we claim are good and we don't see the manifestation. We don't see the power of God through it. Because it's much of flesh than Christ. It's much of us. Oh yeah, I want a lot of people to come to my Facebook life and see that there are 1 million people watching. I want to come to people to come to my Facebook life and see that there are 2,000 people watching. Really? Why? Is that why you came here in the first place? No. The reason why I came, what was the why? What was my why? My why was to do an audio Bible. Basically, that's what God was telling me. That's the assignment. Do an audio Bible. Because people need the word of God. And I'm like, I can't do it professionally. I'm not a professional. You know, what? he said, I said, go ahead and do an audio Bible. That's the why. Doing an audio Bible has nothing to do with 1 million views. It has nothing to do, to do with 2 million views. Would it be a good thing if 2 million people can listen to the Bible? Perfect. Of course, yes. By all means. But should I now carry it on my head like, oh, because 2 million people are not watching it, I should stop or I should give up or I should be angry or I should be doing it grudgingly and annoyingly? No. No. 
I need to know my why. So I'll go ahead and do the thing regardless. Whether it's one person, whether it's nobody, whether I'm talking to myself right now. It has to be done. Because God said so. So, we actually need a personal relationship with God. Deep, deep rooted personal relationship with God. To be able to go about these things. And then another one was here says and wherever he went he was just preaching the gospel doing good some people were just looking out for him to look for issues to look for problems to try to set him off but he was never falling for all those things and so like they said all the words that were coming out from from his mouth they were coming out with power and everything and then some people started sizing him up this is not normal jesus like it's not normal princess i know me and princess that went to this primary school together it's not normal princess like what can she say or what can she do that is so, you know, and then we miss our blessings. Jesus, they said, could not do a lot in his own place where he was born. Look at him. This is him with all his heart and desire. After doing everything, he decided to go to the place where he was born because he didn't want the place where he was born to miss all the marvelous things that God is doing through him and with him. He wanted them to also experience it, but he came there. Because they looked down on it, they could not even receive as much as God would have loved them to receive. It's the same thing. Sometimes your family members are not going to get it. Don't fight them. Jesus didn't go fighting the people in, in, in his birth town. He didn't go fighting them. He didn't go quarreling with them. He didn't go getting irritated with them. He didn't go fighting with them. No. When he just noticed that they were not taking it, he moved to the next town. He moved to the next town. If people in your area don't, don't want to get it, they don't need it, move to the next set of people. Move to the next set of people. There's no time to waste. The people are going to queue in when the time is right. If they have to be there, they'll queue in when the time is right. Eventually, they queued in. They queued in. They were waiting for the Messiah. And the Messiah was seemingly not coming. And they finally queued in. So Jesus was not just going to wait there or start getting angry or give up on his, uh, on his mission or on his vision because a group of people that he, he felt like these are the people that are supposed to support. Of course, you would want your support to come from the people who are closest to you. But if they're not giving you the support, move to the place where they'll give you the support. A certain servant of God said, go to the place where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Originally, it didn't make sense to me. But later on, it makes a lot of sense. Be in a place where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. So that you can use your full potential, so that you can maximize your full potential. Because if you're, if you're in a place where you're tolerated, you wouldn't want to be your best because you don't know what next this person is going to say. Hey, this one wants to just show off. No, it's not showing off. It's maximizing your potential. That's what it is. There are some people that are just not going to like you for fulfilling your purpose. So in trying to make them like you, and, and how does Lisa Nicole say this? She says, if people say your light is too bright, don't dim your light. Light, light, don't dim your light. Give them a shade. Give them sunshade. Don't dim your light for nobody. Don't. If people think that you're overdoing Jesus, don't stop overdoing Jesus. When I was in the world, I was overdoing the world. And now that I'm in Jesus, I have to over and outdo. I, I mean like super do Jesus. It's true. It's true. So some people are not going to get it. The people that are closest to you, even the ones that you think like, oh, this person is supposed to understand me. She knows me better. He knows me better. Why is he not getting this thing? They will not get it because it's not their vision. It's not their purpose. Some people, because of familiarity, will not get it and they will not support it. Some people will not just even want you to do that because they think they are worthy enough. So why are they not the ones doing it? Why is it you doing it? And so they will not encourage you for just so many reasons why people will not encourage you on your vision. Let it be that you heard God and you step on it. It doesn't matter who is supporting you. If God is for you, no one can be against you. The others are just trivial. They are inconsequential. If God is for you, the rest of the people are inconsequential. The only prayer you have to pray sometimes is, Lord, will their heart to wherever you want it to. And of course, if 
God can give nations for your sake. Why not? If he can give his only begotten son to die for you, what else would, would he withhold from you? Like, no, think about it. He gave his only, one and only son. There are some of us who have children. We have like 10 kids. If they say give one, you will never. You will not even dare. You will not even dare. Give one to save just your family. You will not. Even the children might not even accept, you know. Who, who is going to go? Who is going to do that ultimate sacrifice? You know, but Jesus gave his one and only son for your sakes and mine. We shouldn't take his grace for granted. We shouldn't, we shouldn't frustrate the grace of God. So people are not going to like you. They're going to size you up. They're going to look down on you. Like, is it not normal man Mary that I know? Like, we're together in this, this, this. What can she say? Or what can she do? Like, that is going to make so much impact. Is it not the carpenter's son? Like, seriously? Even after all the things they've heard that he has done and done, they were still sizing him up. So because he's the carpenter's son, if he was so common, why were you not also doing the things that he was doing? If it's so common and so normal, right, because it's a carpenter's son who is doing it, you who is bigger than a carpenter's son, why are you not doing it? Why are you not doing it? <laughs> it is well with us, Sha. It is well with us and our souls. And so Jesus went about doing his work, doing good, preaching the gospel, and people just knew. Every time he passed through a place, people were blessed, people were transformed, and many people went about talking about him, talking about him. Oh, have you heard of that person? Have you heard of Mom Mary in that sea? She does this and this and this. She does healthy foods. She does this and this and this and this. And it has really blessed my life. It has really helped my health. I wish that you prosper in good health, even as your soul prospers. So that's her calling, Lead, help, helping people live a healthy lifestyle, a healthy eating lifestyle. So that's her calling. She's fulfilling her purpose. So she's not supposed to be bothered like, oh, she's, um, why is God making my princess to read a chapter a day? Why can't God not make me to read a chapter a day? Mm -mm, it's not her purpose. And if she tries to start doing this thing right now, she'll be using a whole lot of energy and she'll not be feeling fulfilled. But if you carry me now and go and put in healthy living, hey, you have finished me now. You have gently finished me like that. So it can't, it can't even work. So we should be focused. We should just go to God and ask him what our purpose is and ask him what our, hell, our, 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 our work is, what he wants us to be doing that will bless people. What is it? What did he create me for? When you find that thing you do it with, you do, nobody will encourage you to do it. I, I just love the way she does it. You, you need to see the way she designs the food and puts it in the plate. You need to see the way she, she arranges it. You need to see the way she puts it together. I mean, it's just so beautiful. It's effortless because it's her calling. I cannot go and start struggling now to imitate her. It will not work. You borrow one and add, it will not work. That's how they say in mathematics. You borrow one and add, it will not work. It cannot go. Ah! Yes, that's how it is. So we need to get to God and know what our calling is. And we can also know that by studying the word and having a personal relationship with God. God is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And this word became flesh through Jesus and dwelt amongst us. So studying the word, we cannot overemphasize. It's just so so important and with the way the word is being diluted god needs someone to read the word just as it is god needs that and that's why he sends us on this assignment to come and start reading the word reading a chapter every single day it wasn't so much fun when i started but i'm loving it right now and the way it's going so um there were times here yeah that's what I'm saying. Even the devil could know Jesus, could know the power of God in people. Just like um, our brother Kika Carroll said, the, the devil could identify that this one carries God. This one carries Shekinah glory, you know. But in our days, mm -mm, sometimes demons are even dealing with the people that are praying for them. Yeah. But Jesus used to shut them up. 
Jesus used to shut them up. That that they are saying the truth doesn't necessarily mean that they should be left because the truth is that when those people that's that's one thing with us especially most of us africans when something works for this one person or this particular time we want to take it as a norm so a lot of people now will, will be listening to that man which he's coming from the spirit realm they are all in the spirit realm even the evil spirits are in the spirit realm so they, there is a possibility of them being able to kind of decode some things in the spirit realm so now this person knows that this is jesus this evil spirit knows that this is jesus and can identify the next thing is if jesus doesn't cast him out or bind him or shut him up is that the people will believe anything he says and then he'll start doing them now to do the crazy things that they shouldn't be doing and that's what is also making us to fail sometimes or to get um trapped in this um with false pastors and false prophets and false preachers because from the start, they started well, but at some point, they missed it. They are human beings, it's possible. At some point, they missed it. So because they've been consistent to an extent, to a level, we just believe them. So whatever they bring, even if it's from the devil, we still just go ahead and take it. The Bible says, test every spirit. David would ask every single time. He was a man of battle. Jesus had always been, God had always been allowing him to go for war. So like you would ask yourself, why would he want to go for war now? And he's asking God, should I go? And then the next how many minutes again, he wants to go for another battle. He's asking Jesus, should I go? Like, don't you think it would be normal? Like if he's prepared, if he has prepared for battle, if he has prepared for battle, he should just go, right? Right? That's the obvious thing. If he has prepared for battle, he should just go. But each and every, Every single battle he wanted to go for, he was asking God. And there was this time that God told him that, don't go. So you can imagine. So Jesus Jesus used a lot of things. He used a lot of people. He, he did a lot of miracles in diverse ways. Because he didn't want people now to start saying, oh, maybe the people saw him use spittle and more. So and ice. That that is the norm. They go to the synagogue now. Everybody is using spittle and closing it on eyes to heal the blind. No. Jesus wanted us to walk with the power, with the dynamism of the Holy Spirit. Today he can tell you to use spittle and mud. Tomorrow he can tell you to use oil. The next day he can tell you to use a broomstick. He can tell you to use anything. But let it be that is the Spirit of God that is giving you the assignment at a particular time. Not that you just woke up and decided that, oh, this is what is supposed to be done. And that's what is happening. False prophets now do it. They kind of bring up things because they see that a lot of us Christians are very gullible. And so the play pranks on us, they kind of deceive us till the end. It's so sad. But when you have the, the power of God on the inside of you, when you study the word, when you're soaked in the word, you're not going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You will know when to draw the line. You will know when this man has crossed the line. Whether he's the Pope or is the assistant Jesus. If what he's saying does not tie, does not tally with the word of God, it is unimportant. Trash it. It doesn't matter whether he's assistant Jesus. If what he's saying or what he's telling you doesn't connect with the word of God, trash it, my sister. Trash it, my brother. We're still on earth. And as much as we're on earth, everybody is fallible to mistakes. There are some people that can handle pressure to an extent. There are some people that it can get to an extent. They can't handle the pressure anymore. If the Bible says that if the days are not shortened, even the very elect will be deceived, it is true. It is as true as it gets. So even the very elect can be deceived. If the very elect can be deceived, then if you don't work out your salvation with fear and trembling, you would also be deceived. So how would you, how would you escape the deception? By being soaked in the word, by knowing the word of God for yourself, by studying the word of God for yourself, by having a personal relationship with God. So that when someone asks you, who do you say Jesus is? You can tell them who Jesus is unapologetically. You will not waver. Whether they believe it or not, you will not waver because you know what you've experienced and you know whom you've trusted. So let's go. I think that will be it for today. And they said, 
Many people started bringing many more people to him so that he can pray for them. He can heal them. And he was doing that. He was going in the power of God's might because he had the word of God and he was yielding to the direction of the spirit of God. So it's the same thing with us. When we yield to the direction of the spirit of God and we study the word of God, we're going to move in power. God is going to use us. God is going to flow through us to the world. And we're going to be able to make impact to the glory of God. So it has been a beautiful day on a card with you. I really, really do appreciate it. Don't forget to share us out if you can. And also, I always cry out and plead with you all that if you can, please go ahead and study the next chapter, which is going to be chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, so that when you come here, you can be able to tell us what you learned. You can also come on live. You can request to come on live. We'll be very grateful. We'll be very happy to have you on here. And always, always get to comment if you can. It's important. Someone might be blessed by whatever you put in the comment section. With that said, you would have the audio Bible read on all my other social media platforms. Basically, right now, it's mostly on YouTube. You would have it there, just the audio Bible. I'll call it like that. And then you have this one on my page. And then in other places, that would eventually start putting them up. We're trying to find a time and a day to put it up on Instagram and to put it up on um, on our Facebook page so that we don't get ourselves stuffed with so much information and then we'll get information overload. Like we're putting it here and there and there and there. And this person is watching and watching and you know, like that. So we want to put out the days where we can be able to put it up and put it one at a time, one in one day, one in one day. Oh, man, Linda is just got in. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning to you. God bless you. I'm always excited when you come in because you're always fired up like that. Yeah, we're already getting done today. We're already getting done today. Well, we spoke basically, it's one of the scriptures. I think you were there one of the times that we did this because um, Mark, Matthew and Mark did the same scripture. It's the one where Jesus was tempted and we're just encouraging each other that it's important to know that even when God speaks, sometimes some challenging times is God himself who puts you in the place. And the only way you're going to be able to go um, to overcome the challenges is by having the word of God. Jesus was backing up everything that the enemy was saying with the word of God. And he says, the, it is written, it is written. So we need the word of God. And we also said that the enemy is going to tempt you based on where in your area of weakness, not in your area of strength, because you know, in your area of strength, you're already strong. So there's no need. And then we also learned that when the enemy leaves you when he has tempted you and tempted you and he sees that it's not working he leaves you for a season he did that for jesus and so he's going to do it for us too and it's really crazy because when he goes and he comes back and sees an opening he comes back with seven others that's why it's so difficult to actually bring a backslidden christian back to christ as opposed to just meeting a person who has never known about christ and bringing them to christ that's why because the devil comes fortified and so he takes you back into the camp of the enemy and then it gets now really really difficult to get to get you out and then we're saying that sometimes when you're in the place like when you're doing something people are not going to people are not just going to connect to it family members friends relatives and loved ones people that you expect to be the ones to support you in the thing they will not support you because they'll be sizing you up ah it's not this really in this that we're just playing under the rain together, like jumping together under the rain. Like, what can she do? Like, who is she? That's how they were sizing Jesus. It's not just the carpenter's son. Like, and so they did not receive the blessings that they were supposed to receive from Jesus. And Jesus wasn't going to force himself on them. All he did was, boom, he moved to the next place. If they are not ready to receive him, he goes to the place where they receive him. Dust your feet. And move on so if you're trying it's your vision anyways so some it's it's just normal that some people are not going to queue to it some people are not going to warm up to it they might not warm up to it when it has not started 
they might have to warm up to it at some point in time. The Jews to today, like they know now that Jesus had come, the Messiah had come, right? They know. So, but that time they didn't, they didn't queue up to it. They actually, he came to them and they did not know him. It's the same thing. You'll be expecting that your family should be like 100% your, your, your cheerleader. They should be your 100% cheerleaders, but they're like, you think this thing will even work? Some of them will even discourage you. But it shouldn't discourage you. Rather, you should look for the next place to go and do the stuff. That's exactly what Jesus did. And we saw how it worked for him, right? So other people are receiving the blessings. But the people that would have been blessed by whatever you're doing, because it sized you up and they didn't see it, so they missed it. And so we also learned that when you're focused on your calling, your fame is going to spread abroad. And you're going to do it effortlessly. Jesus was going about doing his thing and everybody was following him. When you're doing, when you're fulfilling your purpose and you're in right standing with God and you're walking on the right path, people are going to follow you. You're not going to fight the people. You're not going to want people to do this or do that, you know. And so we should know the reason why God is telling us to do something. So we'll stick to the why. So I'll not get discouraged that, oh, I have just one view. Oh, I don't even have a view. I, I'm just waiting for that time where I want one million views. So if it's not one billion views, I'm not doing it. I've already missed my why. Why was I doing this? The word of God has been so diluted. And God sees it necessary for people to listen to the word of God that has not been changed or done anything to it. They've not done anything to it. It's just the word of God read out so that he can truly through his spirit, minister to us what that word is truly saying. So those are a couple of things. If I forgot anyone, I'm sure you might listen to it again. And then it's going to be a blessing. And I hope you all are, uh, are fine. I, I heard from a couple of friends, sisters, and loved ones that Texas was in like total blackout or something like that. Hope you all are safe and secure and you're fine. It got me worried a little bit. Some people were out of electricity for like almost 12 hours or so, or more, if I'm not mistaken. I hope that the situation is resolved and you all are safe and secure. I had a lot of people complaining, a lot of people talking about it, but I'm sure all is resolved by now. So yeah. That's just a recap of um, the ones I can remember. I, I trust that. And I pray that it has blessed you. And yes. So we said just stick to your calling. You know. Because your calling is what is going to bring you the fame. If you want fame. Jesus probably didn't want fame. But because he was fulfilling his purpose. And he was being a solution in that area. Yes. He was famous. You can't light a lamp and put it under the bed. No, you would have to light it and put it on a lamp stand, right? That's exactly how it is. So when you're being a solution to the problems that you were created for, people are just going to warm up to you. But yes, there's still some people that are not going to warm up to you. Those people have to be there. With the winter and the cold. Yeah, I heard that it was really crazy. People could not heat up their houses. People could not do a lot of things. Hi, Mam Nana Marita. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. You're just coming when we're finishing. I heard that people could not do nothing. They could not heat up their houses. It was so cold, like really freezing cold. God is, God is going to intervene. I pray that he will do some supernatural warmth and cover all of Texas so that the people are going to be safe and secure and we're not going to hear of no tragedies and stuff we're just going to hear of good 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 news and lots and lots of testimony that's what i believe god is just gonna warm up the place supernaturally in a way that only he can oh you're in school oh darling <laughs> thank you for coming anyways thank you for still showing up even though you're in school Thank you. I really appreciate you. 
And I pray that God is going to bless you. God is going to grant you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and retentive memory. And when it's time to do all that you have to do, you are going to be super, super, super duper at it. Oh, God bless you for coming. I really appreciate it. Okay. And like I always say, starting is the hard part. But when I start, I can talk like talk and talk and talk and talk and just keep talking. <laughs> it's my gift. But like I was saying, there's my Marine Dasi here who is into my Marine Dasi is into health, like living healthy, eating healthy and all that. And if you put me there, I'm just going to so fail woefully. You know, if I try to now imitate her because she's doing it so well and people are praising her and then I'm leaving my talking, talking, talking here, which is what I believe that God has blessed me with, the gift that God has given me, I'm going to so fail woefully. It's like taking a fish from water and bringing on land to be on a race with land animals. It doesn't make no sense. No matter how much effort, even if the fish puts in all their best, they won't be able to perform well on land because it's not their natural habitat. Our natural habitat is our place of calling. So if you also take a dog or something into water, the fish is just going to beat them pants down. Yeah, because that's their natural habitat. So no matter how much effort and power and strength and focus and consistency that the dog puts in water, it's never going to be better than the fish. It's never going to be as good as the fish. Talk less of doing better. It, it, it can't work. So that's the same thing. So we also said that, that when you just stay on your lane and you're doing what God has called you to do, which is not only things in church, because sometimes people think, oh, you have to be preaching the word of God. You have to be an evangelist. You have to be a prophet or something before you're fulfilling purpose. They need to be accountants. And so there's an accountant who is a Christian. There is a teller who is a Christian. There is a truck pusher who is a Christian. All these things need to be because we need their services. So health practitioner, um, healthy eating and healthy lifestyle, you know, meet mom, Mary Ndasi. Um, you want to deal with NGOs that are taking care of widows and orphans, which is just outright beautiful. You meet mom Relindis. You know, Tizang Amazing Love Foundation and Mom Mary Dassi. Is it healthy foods? Oh my god, I hope I'm not making a mistake. I, I, I think so. It's healthy foods. That's what it is. They're on Instagram, they are on all social media platforms, and some of them have their websites, so you can go there. If if you don't mind Mom Marilyn this, maybe you can put your website in the comment section, put a link there of the website in the comment section or the Facebook page, whichever one you think is easily accessible, you put it in the comment section so people can go follow, see what you're doing and know how to get on to tag along with it and go on with it. And I'm still to find out what mom, mom Marita does. And then I can be able to give her a proper shout out. So these other people, I, I at least I've seen what they do and I've experienced so they connected with them once in a while to do some stuff with them. So I know exactly what they do. So I do that as well. What's that? Someone just came in. Oh, it said Daniel Bongsi. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We're live and we're about to sign out for today. Tomorrow is going to be Luke chapter 5. We are already in the third book of the Bible. Some people will say like play, like play. We are already the number 3 book. <laughs> that is pigeon. <laughs> play, play, so we are already the number 3 book. Like, Yeah, we are in the third book of the Bible. The third book. And so we are going to get done with the New Testament to the Old Testament. And yes, I'm excited. I'm glad you all have been supporting me all the way till now. So, I always get to say I love you so, so very much. For God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell or follow us on all our social media platforms. So, each time we upload a new video, you'll be the first to know. 
each time we go live, you'll be notified. That is what this is all about. And we're really, really happy that you were here today. Until next time. <laughs>